These are two fat stories, rich in image and filling content. At the end of this long season between Christmas and Easter, we hear these two amazing stories of God's presence and promise. Before the dry days of Lent, we hear two stories that are loaded with hope and joy. Both stories remind us of the most powerful truth we will ever know, that God is with us and for us. God is not out to get us. God does not wait for us to stumble and fall. God does not kill time waiting to make our lives miserable and burdensome. Both stories remind us that God wants the very best for us, offering us a way of life that brings peace and blessing, and offering us Jesus as a living example of who we can be and what life can be. Both stories remind us that a life with God is possible. The very thing for which so many of us long is in fact a possibility, a life lived in relationship with God. We can have the communion with God for which our spirits long. We can spend time with God every day. We can know in our hearts and in our minds the very heart and mind of God. God can be as real to us as any of our family members and friends. And both stories teach this simple truth that once you encounter God, it shows. We may not take on a glow like Moses and Jesus, but the presence of God in a life cannot be hidden any more than you can light a candle, put it under a basket, and expect to hide the light. When God is present in our lives and in our living, that presence can be experienced by others, and they find themselves being drawn like moths toward that flame. These stories of meeting God on the mountaintop are fat, rich, and filling stories that provide for each of us this pre lenten feast. They are Mardi Gras stories that speak to us of life transformed, of life made new, of life lived in communion and relationship with God. These are stories that remind us that there is a richness and sumptuousness to life that is supposed to be there. That richness, that sumptuousness, that abundance comes from a living, life-giving connection with God. And while others try to imitate it, it cannot be copied. Anything else is a pitiable pass for true and abundant life. Lent is really only a few hours away. We'll gather on Wednesday evening and share two simple meals, one of soup, one of bread and wine. They will serve as the beginning of our walk to Calvary and the empty tomb that awaits us on Easter morning. But before we go there, let's just enjoy this moment. Let's feast on the stories of the day of meeting God and being made new. Let's let the richness and sweetness of those stories fill us and satisfy us and leave us wanting more. Let's avoid our Presbyterian intention to look for the downside of the story. Let's enjoy the rich sweetness and joy of this mountaintop moment. So let's say, let the good time. Let's enjoy these glorious moments. Let's celebrate God's goodness and grace. Let's revel in God's presence with us. <laughs>